how to find the best inshore fishing spots anywhere in America in 30 minutes or less. Hi, everybody. I'm Joe Simons. And I'm Luke Simons. We are the Salt Strong Brothers. We are going to be the host of this awesome webinar. Can't wait for you to see what's behind the scenes on this one. We talked about this a lot. We hear about this a lot. And one of our old friends, old Mr. Sargent, said it best, right, that 90% of the entire inshore fishing game is spots. It's about finding the feeding fish. And the other 10% are the lures and the equipment and how you retrieve and that kind of stuff. Yet we, we all chase the wrong stuff, don't we? Yeah, and, that, and that's uh, that's really a problem in, in history is that the, the focus, it, like on commercials, really everything you see on, you know, whether it's online or on on the uh, on TV is is about equipment, right? It's and uh, we're we're kind of led to believe that, oh, I just need I'd be catching more fish if I had this magical lure or if I had, you know, this nice rod or this great reel. Uh, or boat or the nicest boat right and and that's all great but if if you don't know how to put yourself in front of fish it doesn't it doesn't matter and it really comes down to it's he or she who who puts themselves in front of the most fish are going to catch the most fish and, yep. and it doesn't matter uh, necessarily what type of equipment they have yep so how would you like to be able to consistently find new honey holes all year long even if you don't own a boat or even live near the salt water well, if the answer is yes, you would, then you came to the right place. That's what this webinar is all about. So let's get into it. All right, so here's why we are all here. We're here because that guy there on the left, right? We all want to be that. We all want to be holding big lunker redfish like that. And I got a really awesome story about this guy holding the rabbit. But here's the real main reason. It's because we love fishing. It's because we value our time. We want to get better. We want to find new productive fishing spots, right? And, and we want to be just more consistent in catching inshore fish. Yeah, and we're tired of just going to the same old spots over and over again, just hoping they would work. We did that for years, and, uh, and we had some great days, but we had many bad days in between. Yep, and let me tell you this quick story about the hunter. So this hunter goes out in the woods to hunt for rabbits. And the hunter is only about a quarter of a mile into the woods when all of a sudden this rabbit, like he hears it coming from behind, it runs right by him going 100 miles an hour and runs directly into the tree right in front of the hunter. And the hunter's like flipped out. He's like, what just happened here? And he goes up to the rabbit. The rabbit had hit the tree so hard it knocked himself out. He was completely out cold. So the hunter bends over, picks up the rabbit, puts him in his hunting bag, and he heads home for dinner. It was the luckiest day by far. I mean, can you imagine the stories he told everyone, including his wife? Probably didn't believe him. But here's the problem. For the next 20 years, this hunter, instead of going to find new hunting spots, he goes back to that same tree, waiting for that to happen again. And of course, we know what happens. It never happens again. And he becomes a frustrated hunter because he keeps going back to the same spot over and over again, praying that he's going to have that lucky day again. And we've all been there. I've been there. You catch that one monster fish, and it was just a pure luck, and you keep going back to that same spot when really it was a dead spot and you had a lucky day. Yeah, so it's all about being uh, the focus on the yes and uh, without being that, uh, that no person. Yeah. No, no rabbits. That's right. No rabbits. All right, let's talk about today's agenda. In the small amount of time we have together, our goal is to really just make a big impact with you in the following three ways. One is just give you more confidence because confidence is a big part of this and finding new spots quickly, quicker than you ever have before using these online maps. Yeah, next one is just clarity on what to look for and, and more importantly, why feeding inshore fish will be in certain places. Yep. And then finally, we want to help you unlock your potential as an inshore angler so that you can start outfishing all of your friends and being the go-to person in your area. Yet, if nothing else, we're here to help you find and catch more inshore fish. Lots of them. All right, so there's a big secret that you don't hear that often. And if you only read fishing magazines and watch fishing shows and went to all the conventions, you would never know that this was the secret. And it's the secret that people like this. Do you know who this is? The old Spanish Jose. fly, Jose. This is this is someone this is the legend. This is who we grew up watching. And we always wondered, like, how do these guys who are on TV, how do they catch so many fish? Flip how are, yeah, legend. How how are they so good at catching all these inshore fish? And it turns out it's not a, it's not a secret rod, it's not the secret cork he's using, it's it's not a secret lure. It, it's it's all one thing. It's one secret, isn't it? 
Yeah, yeah, and, and it's uh, it's really all about just being at the right spot at the right time. These yep. guys, they're they're not catching all these fish because they have the best equipment, although they do. You know, they they do have the best of the best. But it's more about it's more about just being at the right spot at the right time and knowing how to put themselves in the right spot at the right time. Yeah, these guys study the biology of the fish. Here's another that was Tom and Rich of Saltwater Experiences. This is great, awesome angler, amazing, and they're just amazing, amazing guy, C. Richardson. And all these guys, as Luke mentioned, yes, they have great equipment, but it's the same stuff that's available to all of us. They don't have like special lures that aren't available. Available. It's because they know how to how to read maps. They know how to find feeding zones. The best news is that you too can get results like these guys. So this is Tony, and he's in Orlando, Florida, not exactly the saltwater capital of the world. And we're going to talk about Tony and two other people. We're going to have three case studies of people who have really learned how to use online maps. And Tony is going to be one. This guy had never caught an inshore fish. In fact, he'd only caught a couple saltwater fish in his life before April of 2015. It's not that long ago. And now... These are just some of the fish that he's caught. And while he was doing this, he had a full-time job. He lived in Orlando the entire time. He did not own a boat. You could see he's usually a kayak or he's wade fishing in every single one of these pictures. I don't think he caught a single one of these fish. I mean, look at these. These are different fish, by the way, people. These are different shirts. I mean, this is crazy. And it's just one after another. I promise you, I would get carpal tunnel in my fingers if I had to go down this entire thing, it, it's never ending. Yeah, and it's really, it's really just an example uh, of the fact that you don't have to, you know, grow up on the water. You don't have to grow up doing it your whole life, or even on, you know, even near the water, even within an hour of the uh, of the wa- of the ocean, because um, he's doing it. And it's all about, you know, he has just really mastered the art and science of of finding spots on putting himself in the right spot at the right time. And it really, it really came down just from from just knowing what to study and what to look for. And he he was one of the first people who uh, who bought one of our first courses, and uh, has just been just an awesome testament to just the power of just knowing what to do and actually taking action. Yeah, and and what's really neat about him, we're going to share this in his case study, is now he actually gets paid to fish. I mean, and this could be you. I mean, doesn't that sound awesome? So here's another one, Jim Howe. Jim was another one of the people that went through one of our courses really early. And Jim does not own a boat. I still think to this day does not own a boat. And at the time, he had never caught a redfish before. And and once again, these are just some of Jim's pictures. And this is another one where it just goes on and on and on again. And this was all from shore. You can see he's got his, his little uh, caddy there for him where he keeps all of his gear and this guy is a shore and pier fisherman. Yeah, just a couple tips and is all he really needed. And in most cases, it's just something small um, from going from frustration to, to a lot of success. So, uh, so yeah, Jim has been doing awesome, and it's been really cool to, to even get to know him over the years. Yep. And here's another one from Thegan, who is one of the people that took one of our courses on, on how to find spots. The main thing I've noticed after taking in all the info from your fishing courses and putting it to use is now I have less time wasted looking for fish. My old ways left me out fishing for hours with small amounts of fish caught in the same places. But now, with my pre-trip plans and my new knowledge, I have become very productive in a short amount of time and can now move out to new places and new types of bait. When working a full-time job and only getting out once or twice per week, this makes my time on the water more enjoyable. I love it. It's all about having more fun. So the goal, before we get into all the case studies and some of the big tips here, it's threefold. We want to help you save time. We want to help you catch more fish and spend less time in the dead zones, right? Absolutely. And and more importantly, and and really all this is all inclusive, we just want to have, you know, help you have more fun on the water. That's really why we created Salt Strong in the first place. And and that's our, our core focus is uh, more fun, more success, and just families, friends having a good time together. That's right. And there's one more little goal. Does this thing look familiar? Yep, it's a sunset. And Luke and I like to call it a skunk set. <laughs> and and here's why. We've all been there. I've been there personally. You spend most of the day out in the water. You're frustrated. You're sunburned. You've been skunked. And all you have left to show on your phone is a picture of the sunset. We don't want you to be that person, right? I, I, it frustrates me for the person when I see him post a picture of the sunset and say like, oh yeah, a bad day on the water is better than a good day in the office. No, it's not. Like no one wants to get skunked out there. Our goal for you 
is to have your phone running out of space because it's so stinking full of fish pictures. <laughs> Let someone else take pictures of the sunsets, right, Luke? And if, if you do have a sunset, have a fish in there. That's that's one of the best times to be fishing. So that's uh, at least have a fish in the foreground. Yeah. Either way, hashtag no skunk set pics. <laughs> so one last thing, we want to make sure we're both on the same page and really just kind of have a commitment here and. And here's what we promise to you. If, if you stay to the end, we're going to provide you with some awesome stuff, some really cool tips and tricks and tactics and shortcuts on, on how to find new spots in 30 minutes or less. And we'll also give you a completely risk-free offer to get an entire course on finding spots like a pro. But here's the thing. Nothing pains us more than giving you all this awesome stuff and really giving you a solution and taking time to put all this stuff together and then run into you a year later, or two years later, and you're still frustrated and you're clinging hopelessly to your consistency problems and blaming everything from your lures to the barometric pressure. And so all we ask is that you stick around to the end and then start using these tactics, right? Luke, just implement. It's all about action. Yep. So that's all we ask. So is it okay for us to move forward with this agreement in place? Do we have a deal? If the answer is yes, let's get into it. First, Luke, who the heck are you? You're going to be an instructor on this. Let's talk about you and, and kind of how you've evolved. Yeah, I've just really just been a fishing addict my whole life. Uh, I've just, from as long as I can remember, uh, any chance I get, I'm out on the water. I don't care if it's freshwater, brackish, salt, anything. I, I just I just, I just just enjoy doing it. And that, that's actually me there throwing a cast net as, as, a, as a kid. And that's Joe to the left of me. That was down at Marco Island. But... Um, yeah, really just, just always love fishing. And in my early teens, I, I went from freshwater fishing, which I just loved to do uh, previously, to saltwater, and it just absolutely fell in love. So really all of my passion went towards uh, towards saltwater. And, and after college, I ended up moving over to uh, to Melbourne, Florida, on the on the East Coast, and um, just so that I could be closer to the water. I, I just It was a lot of fun, but I was, I was frustrated for really uh, many years, a couple years, when I first moved there in particular, where all of my coworkers knew I loved fishing, they knew I was out there a lot. I, I was uh, even when I was waiting before I got my boat, and they, people would ask me, "Hey, you know, how did you do?" And I had to like, you know, had many times where I got skunked and I was embarrassed, and I had to like make up stories on why you know that the fish had lockjaw because the barometric pressure. I was just like making up excuses where oh, they just had lockjaw or the pressure was off or whatever I could think of. But then you know, thirty minutes later, the guy down the hall uh, in accounting or wherever, you know, he was showing these awesome pictures and kind of just made me just feel like it, like feel like a fool. And, uh, and so anyhow, so that was kind of like my, my, uh, kind of kick in the butt, if you will, to, to really take it more seriously and to be, to be strategic and diligent on, on getting better. And, uh, I just wish, you know, I wish this kind of stuff was out there at the time because I really just kind of had to do it myself. I'm always very analytical. So I, I at that point I really just started tracking everything. I was printing out the tide charts. I was marking you know exactly when in the tide and where I was catching which type of species and, and slowly but surely started figuring out the trends and it took years you know it, it took many years a lot of uh, wasted time and effort but I finally kind of dialed into the you know to the strategies and tactics that actually enabled me to finally get consistent in catching not, not just one or two fish but slams I was always trying to catch on every trip my goal was to always catch a snook trout and redfish at least one and finally got to the point where I could do that, and I could do it consistently. And, uh, and that really led to, to tournament fishing. Um, and, and what kind of what made me realize that, you know, that we kind of stumbled onto something special is in my first tournament series, a buddy and I, you know, just, out of the, just thought we'd give it a shot. And, our, and this was like, usually these tournaments had like 40 to 50 boats. And at the end of the first season, we were actually on the money board. Like we, we were placing in, in a majority of the tournaments, and, and we were third place overall for trout, and then uh, fourth place for the total combined weight of all trout and redfish. At that point, it was just uh, trout and redfish. So, um, and that was just using artificial lures going against some, like some local guides who were actually using live bait in most of the tournaments. So it, it was really cool to just to realize at that time that you know that just knowing you know kind of being strategic is a huge difference and uh, and it doesn't it, it's not rocket science you just have to just make time and put some effort into it 
And, and I, I, I want to interrupt real quick because I, what I saw you doing was you spent so much time on these online maps. Like I thought you were crazy. Like, man, why is he spending so much time? And like, I think what you're going to see today is you're going to get 12 plus years of Luke studying these online maps and studying the biology of fish. You mentioned earlier about just charting down everything. That was critical. Yeah, and it really boils down to, to spots. You know, it, it's just having a lot of spots and then knowing when to go and when to stay. And, and that's kind of like, like the, 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 the magic thing. And that's just uh, most people just never really think of that. They just sit in a spot and wait on it to be good. Sometimes a spot's not going to be good that day. And, uh, and there's nothing you can do about it other than, other than not waste your time. So at that point, you know, we were in the financial services industry. We, we owned a company. It was doing well. We, you know, life was great. But we just really weren't passionate about financial services. And, and so we decided just to go out on a limb and, and, and just sell it and start Salt Strong. We had no connections to the industry. Um, we really didn't have much of a business plan. I'm kind of embarrassed now that we, we were very blind and uh, – and fortunately, you know, our focus really was just to teach people how to fish because my passion and Joe's passion, too, is we just love teaching and we love fishing. And we just thought, hey, you know, this would be fun to start this up. And uh, we were very fortunate to have some just some some right doors open at the right times. And and so after Salt Strong really took off faster than than we ever thought it would, uh, as far as the content side is, I've essentially become a fishing coach to now thousands of inshore anglers. And I never would have thought that would be possible, especially when I first moved to Melbourne. But uh, it's just a, a testament to just putting together a plan and, and actually sticking to it and, and keeping track of results is incredibly important. And, uh, and now it's kind of funny. I'm almost known as the balcony fisherman after a, uh, a funny video. Do you, do, we, do you have that up front, Joe? Yeah, here it is. Yeah, so I just click play. And this is, uh, let me just give you a little perspective here. This is me on the third floor balcony of our, of our office now. And there's a snook right about here, and uh, we were actually on a on a business call, and Joe saw the snook from the from when he's looking out the window, and we got off, and so anyhow, I grabbed a rod and uh, made some casts to it, and this third cast, there you can see the snook right there, and it just goes and pounces on the lure. <laughs> it was a uh, a lot of fun, and it was crazy to see just how much uh, how much publicity that got. It like the news channels picked it up, so I, I, I cast. I had a lot of people uh, talk about that balcony cast. Yeah, Pretty it was funny. awesome. All right, so you've done a lot of things, right? What's this picture? Looks like a tournament there, huh? Yeah, so that's just one of those tournaments. That's a trout, and uh, and again, that was just what we were catching consistently after after years of, of just dialing in and finding new and better spots over and over again. And uh, it took a lot of work, but it but it all proved to to really really pay off. Yeah, it's all about those spots. But you've also done a lot of things wrong, right? You've, oh, uh, you've yeah. probably got a whole second bedroom, I guess. That's kind of proof you've done a lot of things wrong. Yeah, of, yeah, you've of, seen of, it. Of old used tackle and lures. and Yeah, for years. I mean, just like just like most of us, right? We, we just go out and, and we think that it's the equipment is, that what, we, is what we need and, uh, and just spend more money than we probably need to or probably should. And, and I have, you know, like even in, in high school, I was using my like, lawnmower money to go out and buy new lures and uh, and most of it's now just junk that uh, you know most of it didn't work. Um, it really comes down to just finding spots. I, I wish I would have focused on the you know spot search and and getting better at assessing an area than I did with uh, buying stuff. I would have a lot more money. Yep. Does that sound familiar to you? All right. So after doing this for 15 years, what what do you what do you discover? Yeah, I mean, it's really all about spots, uh, spots and, and in particular trends. Um, and, and really, once you know that, uh, you have a huge advantage. You don't really have to have anything good. Like that snook right there, that was caught on a jerk, a jerk bait, you know, no no live bait needed. And that was in a tournament, too. That was in a separate tournament where we were, I think we were the only artificial uh, lure boat, and uh, and we were competing with, uh, with them. So uh, the other thing is that fish are very predictable. Um, they're not smart. They are just completely reactionary to most things, and as long as you know, you know what they react to and how they react to it, you can again put yourself in the right spot at the right time. And and most importantly is that these online maps reveal a lot. If you know how to if you know how to use an online map and get better and better at there's like there's an like art and a science that's kind of half and half. But if you can put that together, you don't need to go buy maps. Right? I used to buy you know all those different maps that show potentially good spots and now i don't even mess with those um it is, it is shocking how much data you can gather 
from an online map, even in areas that have murky water. And, and we'll, we'll cover some, some really helpful tactics on that here soon. Cool. Well, speaking of reading maps the hard way, we talked about the hunter, right? The hunter who kept going back to the same spot. Luke, you and I, we've been there. It's relying on the same three to, three to five spots over and over and over again. And the other hard way is the top spot, top spot blues. And we're going to talk about that in one of the case studies. And we use top spots. I mean, I still think it's a great map. But it's not perfect, and the online maps just reveal so much more when you know the tricks on how to read them. And another one is just having to rely on other anglers. You know, yes, there's some, uh, fortunately, a lot of anglers that, that are good about, you know, showing and, and telling you where to go. But in most cases, it's not going to be the best spot. And in some cases, it's the wrong spot altogether. <laughs> yeah. And then finally, driving around in your boat for hours looking for spots is a horrible way to do it. We've done that before, and that is not fun. Absolutely. I've wasted a, a lot of gas money uh, just exploring around in some, in many cases, areas that I just had no business being into just because I just didn't, I just didn't know. Yep. So do you want the easy way to find productive inshore fishing spots, even if you don't have a boat? I mean, just imagine what your life would be like if you could go out and catch more fish than you ever had before. And imagine if you could just look at your computer for 30 minutes or less the day before you go fishing and know pretty confidently where the fish are going to be. That's what we're going to teach you throughout the rest of this webinar. So let's talk about the three secrets we're about to cover here next. So secret number one, this is the number one thing to look for when you're using online maps. And it's something that usually always holds feeding fish. And secret number two is how to find feeding zones using online maps, even in murky water. And then the final secret before we get into the case studies is going to be the one hidden feeding zone that almost all fishermen overlook. All right, secret number one. This is the number one thing to look for when using online maps. It's the thing that almost always holds feeding fish. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's really just, it all comes down to the basics essentially, but it's structure. The number one thing is structure, and how you know that is just think like a fish, right? Because fish are not complicated. They are very basic. They really just have two things on their mind at any given time, and it's Where's my next meal going to come from? And then how am I not going to be the meal to something else? And so structure is really the one thing that, that solves both those problems. Because like if you're going after snook, redfish, trout, you know, flounder, you know, those fish, they're not the biggest things out there. There are a lot of different things that can eat them, and in particular dolphin, which they're all very terrified of. But, um, but structure you know, is protection you know, for them from predators like dolphin or sharks or anything really anything bigger that, that would want to eat them. And, uh, and then conversely on the food side is that the smaller fish even have more predators that are going after them. So they are even holding tighter to structure in most cases. So nine times out of 10, the, the top feeding zones are going to be in areas that have structure. And just like anything else, when you maximize your structure, you're going to maximize your results. So the way to apply that onto a map is to look for areas that that have a lot of structure and and utilize you know today's technology to do that from the convenience of your own home or at the office yeah so let's get on the actual map and let's talk about your kind of aha moment when you really realize the power of these online maps and we're going to go over google here uh, we have a whole course that really goes in depth on which are the best maps and why for certain places and times etc uh, but for simplicity, for this webinar, since we don't have forever, we're going to use Google. And Luke's going to actually show you uh, a spot where, uh, where he really had an eye-opening moment. So after college, when, when I moved over to the, you know, the Melbourne area, it, is I, I, really, I was in a new area. I'd never been here before. I was a really all-new fishing ground. So my first step was really to go out and buy maps. You know, I was buying those different maps like Top Spots and a variety of others that, that were showing the different areas to fish. And at this point, I, I was, you know, I was living up here, and in most cases, I was, I was on trips on the weekend. You know, I was traveling a lot, and so I really only had just like a, you know, couple hours after work to fish in most cases. So I, I was really wanting to find a spot nearby that I could just quickly launch the kayak, find a good, fe you know, a good fishing zone, and, and have results. And so uh, one area that really caught my interest because it was, it was marked on those maps. Is this this spot here there's two islands right here that both were, were marked as as good spots for that particular time of the year and the cool thing was 
is that I found that there's a public park for that I could use as a, uh, as a launch point that's really close. And best thing is it's called Fisherman's Landing. So I, f- I found it. I was so pumped. I was like, oh, this is it. I finally have a way that I could actually just fish after work and, and have fun, right? And so, so I went there. You know, I launched, paddled up to these islands, fished around all of them, and didn't catch a thing. I was completely dejected. I, I thought I had my answer, and I, and I and it just wasn't there. That the areas just didn't look good, although the map said they were. But uh, fortunately, it was so bad that I had time to to check out this island, which isn't marked at all. And so I just I was just paddling along, just looking around and. And it actually started looking up pretty lively once I got, you know, up up toward where these houses ended. You can see there's a trough uh, right here, but there's a, you know a really good uh, sandbar. But more more I guess more importantly is I started catching a bunch of redfish and trout all along this this southern tip. And uh, and it's what really stuck out. You know, when I got back home and I was just kind of looking at these maps. This is when I first started using these online maps is I realized that, hey, like, you know, this is what I should be using. I should, I should really just look for structure. Because um, if, you, if you zoom in at this level, you can see that there's some good grass. Like these little, these little uh, splotch marks, uh, this is grass. And, and you can see, you know, the difference between the grass and the sand. And then you can see some, some good grass here, some heavy stuff. And, and it's all about, again, just finding structure on these maps and then, and then knowing, you know, what to look for. And over the years, I've just realized it just comes down to the the basics, right? It's you maximize your structure, you're going to maximize your results. So, so this spot in particular, I mean, now just looking at it, I kind of I just stumbled upon this. But but after again a lot of years on trial and error, a spot like this now would immediately stick out to me, where I would I would not even bother with the other maps, where I see so many different forms of structure. You have a point, you have a cove, or you have a dock. You have changing uh, changing depths. You can see, you know, along this shoreline is, is is shallower. It's a lighter color, and it's also sand. But that leads to a dock with deeper water that also has grass. So that's like four different types of stru- types of structure. And having four different types of structure is a much much higher chance of catching anything than you know out here on the outside, right? Where there's just not as much. And if we go back to those islands in particular, you know, there's not nearly as much contour on the bottom. You know, all there really is, is, you know, the trees with a shallow flat that then gets deep and uh, you can't really see any grass at all. So um, just, again, just just knowing just, just those simple basics like that uh, can be, uh, you know, a big difference in, uh, in, in results. And I think a big thing that a lot of people tend to forget is going back over here Luke to the grass the grass is like one of the ultimate forms of structure I think a lot of people are looking for something bigger but I mean that those dark spots the grass that is structure I mean it's massive structure for small fish for crustaceans for crab shrimp I mean that's where a lot of the magic happens if you can find those 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 nice little dark dark grassy spots yeah and when you go back to to, you know thinking like a fish so the the really small fish like the crustaceans little little bait fish they're going to be in the grass but the, the bigger fish like snook, redfish, trout, you know, a lot of times they need the potholes that are in the grass to be their protection, right? The, the food sources kind of scattered throughout the grass. But what, I, what I've realized over the years is that I, I now look for uh, areas that have like camo bottom, right? Where it's not, it's not 100% grass. It's not 100% sand. It's, it's some of each. So you can see just in this little this little zoom. This isn't the best picture, but you can still get the the concept. So up here is really just all you know one granular color. It's light. That's it's a it's a sand bottom. And as you see down here, you can see kind of different splotches of of grass. That's good. But uh, but I like to have about 50 50 um, as far as grass to sand. If not you know 75 grass, 25 sand. So I like to see you know, a, a lot of different sand spots inside the grass because that is typically the type of areas that the bigger fish, like snook, redfish, trout, they're going to be using that for their own protection against, you know, dolphin, sharks, and any other kind of big, bigger creature that uh, that might be, you know, searching for them. So, so again, that's, uh, that's kind of like, again, it seems basic, but I promise you if you actually take action and, and actually look for areas like this, 
in whichever area you might be fishing, you're going to see some good results. Yeah, so let's let's go into another spot in the state of Florida here and go back to the uh, to the slides. All right, so this is secret number two. We're going to show a whole nother spot here. And I remember this because you, you told me that this guy called you kind of heckling you. And he was like, oh, does this stuff really work in murky water? I'm up, you know, North Florida near Jacksonville, St. Augustine area. And we call him the Jacksonville heckler. Luke, pull up the, the maps real quick while we're, uh, while we're talking about him. And this is a guy who had watched a lot of our stuff, loved it. And was just still a little bit skeptical, honestly, and and said, "Hey, Luke, you know, I live up in Jacksonville. It's just it's too murky up there. Can you can you can you prove it can work here?" And so Luke literally got on the map, and, and I think we can show let's show uh, Google and Bing on here too, and kind of show the difference. And so yeah. this would be a cool place to do that. Yeah, this is this will really show the importance of of being comfortable with two different map features, and also knowing some kind of like ninja tactics, if you will, on, on how to make the most out of one one service in particular. So. So yeah, this guy, this guy, I thought he was like genuinely looking for for help. He he definitely fooled me. So I'm gonna go ahead and show some of his spots here to the to the public. But um, he was like, hey, I live here. I live in Jacksonville, and I think there's a ramp right around here that he says he used a lot. And he's like, well, you know, where would you go? Like, you know, d- does this, you know, does map reading really work in areas like Jacksonville that that typically has murky water? And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, Because obviously it's all about maximizing structure. In some cases, you just can't find a map that has clear water to you know to actually enable you to see the bottom contours. But uh, but even still, you can still see you know areas like points, right, and like creek outputs and and coves. You can see in docks. You know you can see a a lot of the stuff. Even oyster bars. Even if it's murky water, you just find a map with uh, that was taken or a picture that was taken at low tide. And you can see oyster bars, but uh, again, the, the power of uh, being comfortable with different maps uh, is that you can usually find at least one that looks good that that is very helpful. So here's here's uh, we're going to analyze this island in particular, and uh, and here's Google. You know, as you zoom in, you can kind of see um, you know some decent structure. There's a point there. You can we'll zoom in all the way, and you can kind of see that something's going on. We have a little bit of glare here. Um, so it's kind of helpful, but not that much. You can see a little bit of sand, but uh, wait till we switch over to Bing. Uh, so we'll go over to Bing, and this is that same island. You know, this is I'll zoom out so you can see same area, um, much more clear, right? This is this is way more clear. You can you can zoom in and you can actually see that you know not only is there stuff there, but there's a lot of stuff. And in this case, um, this was probably either oysters or maybe oysters with. Um, some some uh, some sawgrass that at this point is completely exposed and, and you can really see some great structure. This this uh, this is really the area that I showed them, and uh, and a really cool feature on Bing. And one reason why I like Bing now than the others, and I'm sure this will change as different map providers come up. I used to never use Bing at all, but uh, but one really cool thing is that you know yes this is pretty cool. This is this is much better than Google. But Bing allows you to actually see a variety of different images from the same spot. So I switched over to Bird's Eye, and this is a, a different picture taken at you know on the same location. That makes sense. So so that's cool. But this one in particular is not. It's actually a little bit worse. But the again the cool thing about Bing is that not only do you get this picture, but you can click this little arrow, and what that does is it toggles the uh the image uh, uh 90 degrees so you get four different shots a, d- a different image taken at a different time here's another one again not very helpful but it's an option um uh, and then look at this one uh, this is uh, just from the different angle gold mine gold mine right like this was taken uh, it happened to be on a really clear day um even it looks like um was at a low tide as well so you can really see that there's a lot of structure on here there's a lot of um, again, the oyster bars, or you know, I can't tell exactly what it is, but when you see stuff like this, definitely mark that as as a very you know very highly likely spot where you have again points. We'll zoom in; you can see the different types of structure, um, all of which is close to an inlet. Um, a spot like this is typically good year round, and uh, and so this is what I came back to him with. I I had this one, and let me go back to the aerial where I can get everything back to north and south. So I, I went back to him like, hey, you know, you ought to check out uh, this shoreline. And then I also uh, just went down the bank a little bit 
And again, it's all about maximizing structure. This area stuck out to me because it had docks, right, where there really weren't any docks anywhere else. Like there was nothing um, like big. There wasn't any big barriers down this entire shoreline. So I was like, hey, you know, you probably ought to check out these these docks in particular, the first and last ones, because as a fish comes down, it t- they typically stop at like the first one they see and kind of just hunker down there for a bit. And, uh, and sure enough, you know, he was like, he was actually, oh my gosh, I'll, that's pretty, pretty good. Cause he's fishing, he's been fishing those two different spots for a long time and, and has had success there. So, so that was uh pretty cool to, uh, to have heard that that would, that happened like shortly after we started, started, uh, salt strong and shortly after we started, you know, putting together these online courses. So it was really cool to, just to see proof uh, again, that these, these tactics and strategies, they don't just work you know, here in Tampa or over in Melbourne or, or just, just Florida alone. You know, these, these are things that can be, can be implemented in different States, you know, with the whole different water clarities, because no matter where you are, there's always at least some helpful information that you can gather, um, that you don't have to, you know, be out on the water using your valuable time. You can just do it from the community of your home or office in like 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, even even when you're traveling, which is so cool, right? That, that now, not only can you find new spots in your own hometown, in your own areas, but you can travel more, which I think is such a fun part about fishing in general, is that whole adventure part, right, Luke? Exactly right. Yeah, my favorite thing to do, that's why I actually show, uh, we have an insider program, and, and I show my spots because as soon as I find it, it's really not nearly as valuable as the areas that I haven't found yet. So so I'm all I just love going to brand new areas and and quickly, you know, being able to to kind of perfect the art and science of, of just finding the feeding zones as quickly as possible. And uh and I just love the exploration aspect of it all. Yep. So thank you, Jacksonville Heckler, for <laughs> proving us right. All right, so secret number three, let's uh let's get into another really cool thing on the maps. This is the one hidden feeding zone that that almost all fishermen overlook i didn't know about this until you taught me and i was like man that's really cool and it's so smart so let's talk about this uh real quick yeah so again it's all about structure and shadow lines so it's not it's essentially like an invisible structure and and it's something that not many people talk about but it it is actually it really does work and that's a a big reason why i like docks as i mentioned before i I was um I, i mentioned that that individual in jacksonville is that, hey, you probably need to check these docks out because that whole area was lacking shadow, right? Like they're, they don't have mangroves up there. It's pretty much the shoreline is all like sawgrass and mud and, uh, and nothing really tall. And, and so that a dock, you know, that overhanging structure creates a shadow line. And I don't know if you've ever been, um, you know, lobster diving or anything. Like we go down the Keys and we end up diving around the bridges. And it's, it is crazy how little you can see when you're when you're uh, you know out of the shadow when you're in the sun going toward the shadow under a bridge it's almost like a little bit spooky and and so the the fish you know that's not just us that's with fish too like little bait fish you know that they are kind of blinded by that by that shadow line and so in many cases the predators will be hanging out right inside the shadow and uh and and just ready to again that's just the ambush point it, it's literally it's not a physical barrier but it's a it's a visual barrier that they use to their advantage and uh and, and so shadow lines is ex- incredibly important especially like night fishing is, is a good example a lot of people um focus on like sh- straight under like snook lights and everything and that does work i've got some of my biggest ones my biggest snook you know out there on, on the shadow lines on the on the uh, on the outer regions because again fish are using that as well and same with bridges when bridges have you know big lights over them there's going to be uh a long, a long shadow. That's, that's a straight linear shadow and, and a tarpon snook, really a lot of predator fish will just kind of cruise up and down that shadow line and, and they'll be feeding right there. And so very, very important is to, is to consider shadow lines. And that includes when you're dock fishing, right? If it's uh, if it's, you know, midday, the, the shadow is going to be straight down and, and kind of like both sides of the dock is going to be equally, um, I guess equally uh, uh, valuable. It's going to have just the, the same chance of success. But as the sun goes down, right? Like as like when three o'clock approaches, the the side of the dock that you really need to focus the most time on is, is that side that has the shadow towards it. Because again, those fish are typically going to be hanging inside the shadows, and in this case, they'll actually be hanging a little bit away from the dock. 
in many cases, which not only will help you increase your bites, but uh, but also help you pull more, more of them out uh, before they can you know get you tangled all up. So so again, this is something that uh, you know when you're reading these maps, when you see an overhanging structure, that is a, that is a, a very key type of a, of point to to focus on. So let's get on the map real quick and just show everyone how you'd use this. Especially, let's just say you're visiting a new area and you know there's a boat ramp close by, so that's what you're going to use. And, and what do you do next when you look for these shadow lines? Yeah, well, again, it, it's these all about... invisible shadow lines. Yeah, the invisible shadow lines. It's, it's not like... A, this isn't something you just kind of like look for. It's just it's like a, a, just a tidbit that you need to consider, especially in an area like this that just doesn't have much overhanging structure. Or like, I'll just follow the path you know, towards this boat ramp and, and even towards the inlet is you'll notice there is a, a lack of any sort of overhanging structure of any kind along this entire shoreline, right? You have, you know, you do have some cuts, you have some points, but, you know, when I zoom in here, like this entire entire shoreline is, is basically barren except for these docks. Yeah, and so as far as using the shadow lines, obviously this is just a picture, but this illustrates the 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 different you know the the way that you should fish a dock like this. So if I was fishing this area at this time, you can see that it's probably maybe early in the morning. the The shadow line is over here toward the left. That means the sun's out there toward the east. So the the side of the dock that I would focus my attention on, I would position myself towards the shadow. You know, on the shadow side. And I'm going to be throwing my lure up under these pilings, ideally going all the way across the, the shadow and then bring it in until I hit both sides. I hit the, the, the side toward the dock and then I hit the other side. So if you're doing that, again, these fish are, are going to be hanging in the shadows most often. So if you're able to get your, your lure all the way through the dock and, uh, and then hit both sides of the shadow line, that's just going to maximize your results. It's going to, it's going to double your success rate. And, uh, and even more importantly, too, especially if you hook into something big, is that a lot of times when the shadow is uh, is off to the side like this, these bigger fish will be hanging out a, a little bit away from the dock than they would, say, at noon. At noon, they're you know many times directly under. So uh, when the shadow is off to the side, uh, very, very important is to, again, focus your time there. And then when you do get a bigger fish, let me see if we can zoom in further. That's as far as I can go. But when you do get a fish... Um, you're less likely to get, you know, get snapped off and, and get taken back underneath the dock. So again, just uh, it's a small tip. It seems small, but uh, but when you actually think about it, when you're on the water, and, and especially when you're, you know, planning your trips, it, it goes a long way. Yep. So once again, so you can see it with the mouse position over on this side, casting through underneath the dock, or even here with this big old shadow, and then retrieving back, hopefully landing a big fish in your boat or kayak or paddleboard right there yeah and and, and just as a, another tidbit too so ideally you know if the if the positioning was like this you always want to retrieve your lure um, with the current because that's the natural direction so you're, you're almost setting yourself up for failure if you're fishing this shadow line when the current is uh is going is going this way right if, if it's going if the current's going from from right to left, then you know you're you're basically pulling your lure in an unnatural direction. So to plan your trip, you would want to fish a dock line like this uh, at a time when the the current is is coming towards you, right? It's coming. This will be an incoming tide in this case. So you'd want the current to be again. If you were able to strategically plan your trip, uh, you would want the current to be um, you know going this way so that you can cast your lure up through the shadow lines, bring it through the shadow lines with the current, which is the natural direction. That's the, the area that the fish are going to be really focused on. That's going to maximize your results. So again, like little tidbits like that go a long way. Yeah. And that's just that little tidbit. That's how people can go hit up four docks and catch a ton of fish in one hour or less, all because of little things like that. So hopefully all this is making sense, is it? Cool. Well, let's get into the case studies next. We have really, three really cool uh, case studies. We're going to do Jim's story, Chris's story, and then Tony's story. So let's talk about Jim first. There's old Jim. And this is a really cool story of Jim catching his first ever redfish. And now he's caught tons of them, as we showed you earlier. And it was all from really you teaching him how to, to use a map for the very first time. 
yeah, it's really all about just using some some tip, you know, simple tips to that, that can go a long way. And and uh, this is uh, G- Jim's. He's he's in uh, he's in Alabama and Gulf Shores, and you can see that's a long ways from uh, from Florida, where I where I really learned all this stuff. And 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 he he ran, uh, sent an email in and just saying that he was getting frustrated. He was having trouble um, just finding areas that that were you know where redfish were, and he just couldn't catch any. And he, I think he was I don't think at the time he still hadn't caught any. And, uh, and he just needs some help. And so I, I literally spent no more than 10 minutes. So I, I just looked up Gulf Shores and, uh, and he doesn't have a boat. So that's another factor where, um, you know, using these maps, you know, a lot of people think, oh, you know, I can't do it because, you know, it's not helpful to me because I don't have a boat, yada, yada, yada. You know, it's another excuse. But in reality, all you have to do is just find an area that looks decent or good that also has, you know, some public access, you know, where you can actually access it without breaking laws or trespassing anything. So, so what I did is I, I, I really, I really liked the, this look of this little small inlet, right? And there's, there's really nothing else like that around. And so I realized that, okay, you know, there's a little inlet and there's actually a park nearby. And I wasn't sure exactly if it was, you know, public or not, but what, what initially caught my eye is that, you know, there's some pretty good structure. Um, obviously this current is creating some different, uh, you know, depths, and as you go along here, this is actually a, a, a newer map. At the point, at the time, you, know, you can see a little bit of grass, but at the time when the the picture was when I when I looked at it, there was actually some pretty healthy grass out. And uh, and there's a really cool feature in Google. I think Bing now has it too. But see this little this little guy down here, this yellow guy in the in the bottom corner. You can actually grab them and drag them onto the street to see you know, like what exactly is there. Right, and so I did that, and there's no parking on the street. But then, if you look over, you know, here's some like public bathrooms. So I was able to determine that this is an actual, this is a park. This is a public park. You can actually zoom in there and see the parking situation. It's just crazy how much information again you can pull from these maps. So you know, I did this. Let me get back out onto the uh, normal view. So click back on the uh, the aerial. And so I was like, hey, you know, you might want to just go to this park, park there. There's a free parking lot. And then take, I told them two lures. You know, if it's more than two and a half feet, do this one. If it's less than two and a half feet, use the other one. And uh, he wrote back like two days later that he was so pumped he caught his first redfish. So, uh, again, this is a cool testament to um, the power of just using these maps is that you can really weed out you know, 90% of the, the bad areas and, and kind of dial in to an area that is most likely going to have fish without even, you know, ever having fish anywhere close to that area. Yep. Awesome. Awesome stuff. And now as we showed you, Jim has caught tons and tons and tons of tons Absolutely. of fish. So let's go into Tony's story here real quick. Tony has too many stories to tell all of them. He's got one really cool one, and and we're going to show you one how he uses maps because, once again, he's in Orlando, so he really needs to maximize his time and how he used a map to find a really cool spot in the Belver Beach area, Indian Indian River area. Yeah, and I I think just he's a testament to the fact of how powerful this is where where he lives in Orlando, so he had an hour drive just to get to the water, and and so every second that he could take, you know, before – taking that time to drive and explore around from the convenience of his home or office, the better. And so he really quickly became an, just an expert at, at finding areas that were productive and uh, dialing in. So he's actually, you know, he now uh, is working, uh, working with us. And this is our, our insider membership platform that he's now, uh, you know, uh, putting in some awesome reports for. And, and here's one in particular at the Mosquito Lagoon. This is one of his first times exploring uh, Mosquito Lagoon. And, and this is this is his report, and you know, he's basically right now showing the exact area on the map that that he was fishing. We we show the exact details, and uh, and he's gone from again somebody who has never caught a redfish at all to now he's going to areas he's never been to before, and uh, and just having some really cool experiences like this. And uh, let me show you what's happening here. So right here, where this arrow is. There's three redfish. One, two, three. And, uh, and he he was uh, he's standing up in his kayak paddling. Saw him. You saw him put the paddle down. And uh, and now again he's about to have just a really cool, really cool thing. So he flipped it out, did a couple twitches, 
and then they all raced at it. And again, just some awesome, awesome sight fishing. And, and this is, again, a guy who has just two years ago had never even really caught redfish before. Yeah, it's awesome. And this is the reason our insider uh, club, our fishing club is exploding is because we literally show you all of our spots and, and even more importantly, all the trends behind them. And so you can see here on the side, we've got stuff going for, for years now. We're trying to do one at least every single week, if not two all over the place and once again showing you how we find the spots and then the trends that you can be using all year long and, and really replicating it anywhere so yeah and, and also too for areas like this that have uh, licenses specific licenses to fish you know we obviously give all that sort of information so that you can you know you can actually be comfortable knowing that you're not breaking any laws so it's a it's a click here there's uh this is a no motor zone so you have to actually print out a uh, license and and have it on you on your hand, you know at with you at the time to uh to be legal so we you know we obviously make sure that you're on the the right side of the law there so yeah tony's been just a, an awesome uh awesome testament to how powerful this can be yeah would you like to be our next case study be pretty cool huh well let's let's talk about chris he was one that that was kind of our next case study and it kind of happened uh haphazardly right he won a, a yeti cooler we had in a contest and we decided to drop it off and Let's talk about what happened there real quick, going back to the, to the map. So Chris Olt won the contest, and we were going to go fishing with him in a place that neither of us had fished before. Uh, it was kind of in between us and Tampa and, and him where he had just moved to recently. And uh, we decided to, uh, to hit this area up, uh, Bay Pines, yep, and really killed it that day on the day after a really nasty cold front came through where we didn't see anybody else out on the water that day yeah this was uh i think it was early november maybe late october and and the like one of the first cold like serious cold fronts of the year pushed through and uh and it, it literally came through like the night before we were uh we were going to fish and we planned this trip like probably two weeks ahead of time so i, I was like i was pretty nervous and i had a game plan before we went and, and i really wanted to i was looking at the maps you know, I, I was analyzing this this uh, shoreline here, and again, back to maximize your structure. You're going to maximize your results. There's all sorts of good looking structure. You have points. You have pockets. I'll even zoom in. You can see, you know, a point right next to a pocket with this little, uh, you know, the seagrass. Some good, again, like camo bottom. You know, a little bit half and half grass, half sand. Um, looks awesome. And then areas like this, like this, um, usually a formation like this is an oyster bar. And, uh, and I guess we don't have time to go through the specifics, but in, in the, this course we're going to tell you about here in a second, is there some, some tips and tactics on how to determine oyster bars versus grass. But anyhow, again, this whole shoreline was looking awesome. Uh, but it was the winter time, and a big cold front was coming in, which, which brings – in Florida here, uh, most often really strong winds from the northeast. And uh, in the winter time, it's really about uh, maximizing the uh, the water uh, temperature. You know, they're the looking for warmth. And so, with all this water activity on the shoreline, just the the science behind water. You know, a lot of moving water will help. You know, help put the colder air temperature into the water, which makes the water colder than it otherwise would be. And conversely an area that is actually calm, right? If you have a northeast wind, um, this shoreline is going to be the calmest, um, which means there's less cold air that is being, uh, you know, transferred into the water. So this, um, you know, scientifically, this shoreline is going to be warmer than this one after a big cold front that comes through. So so that was really my reason to do a complete game change. Like the, it happened like the night before, right? It's like as soon as I realized the conditions, I was like, oh my gosh, this is probably going to be a bust, although it looks awesome. You also have to take into account, you know, the time of the year and the, uh, the weather uh, on, uh, you know, determining which spot is better than another. It gets obviously more advanced than that, but I just wanted to kind of give you an example of, uh, of that. And, and so what I did is I just, okay, like this pocket, you know, right, scientifically, um, this is going to be the warmest area because that wind is literally coming from, from this exact opposite direction. So... Um, sure enough, that's where we, uh, we started fishing. I think we started fishing that dock in particular and caught our first redfish on this dock. So again, this was a spot where none of us had ever fished there. It was terrible conditions, uh, conditions on, you know, that I would actually never have fished, uh, before previously. 
and we found results in the first 10 minutes. It was like, a, I think it was like a 24, 25 inch red. It was a solid red fish. And, uh, and then, you know, sure enough, uh, kept going to the shoreline and, and the night before, you know, I was checking all this out and you can see some, um, some details, you know, some brown stuff here on the bottom. Even if I zoom in more, you can see that this is darker than the other areas next to it. And so I knew that and I was, uh, I was sure to not tell, uh, Joe or Chris. And so I caught a snook right here at this dock because again, I knew it had a higher chance than the other docks because of that, uh, that structure. And, and we really just fished that shoreline and had just an awesome day. I think we caught what, like six or seven redfish, a snook or two, some, some trout, um, it was an awesome day. Yeah, on a day that most people, and quite frankly, we even thought about calling it off just because it was so cold. I mean, we showed up in our fleeces, and, and and that's just proof. If you know how to read these maps and kind of predict where the fish were going to be, it is game-changing. You have a whole lot more fun. So can we give you the secrets to finding more productive inshore spots? Well, hopefully you'd agree that the past hour has been time well spent so far. Hopefully you learned a lot of cool stuff, right? Yeah, and obviously we, we can't cover everything you need to know in just in this short webinar, you know, even if we had all day. But but more importantly though is is really we just covered one part of the equation and that was the finding spots, which is incredibly important. You know, just using these maps to to make your spot finding much more efficient. But the other side of the equation is, you know, what to do when you're actually there on the water and and, and how to choose, you know, the, the general areas to even search for your spots. Um, so without knowing that, you know, this basic um, really map reading tactics that we that we showed in this webinar, it's not nearly as useful. So the fact that you're still here, we have a special offer so that you can get everything you need to know, both sides of the equation. And if you act fast, I'm going to give you a very special risk-free deal. Yeah, and this is really our complete blueprint to helping you get more confidence and just get more consistent at catching inshore fish. And this is a risk-free offer we've actually never even given before. So old fishing habits do die hard. And if you've made it this far, you're about to have two choices. Number one, you can be the angler who falls behind and keeps going back and doing the same old thing, doing what you've always done, going back to the same old spots, wondering why you aren't catching consistent inshore fish as fast as you want. But you don't really want to continue being frustrated with your fishing game, do you? I can't imagine you, you don't want to keep wondering why some other anglers have so many awesome fishing pictures and stories to show up and, and you don't. I, I'm guessing no, or you wouldn't be on this webinar right now. What we want to teach you is is just how to maximize your time and give you more freedom and just give you more confidence and have more fun out there. So option number two is you take us up on this offer and start outfishing your friends. Start having more fun than you've ever had out there and start being the go-to person just like Luke did uh, in his office where all of a sudden people are coming to you for advice and people are coming to you for fishing tips and learning how to read maps. Yeah, and really, once uh, once I started winning tournaments, that's when it really turned over at the office. Like everybody kind of just started looking at me as the kind of the fishing authority, and it was it was pretty cool. Even though you know that was just the the work environment, but uh, just knowing again these tactics is incredibly important. If you learned anything in this webinar, I can assure you, you're going to absolutely love this uh, this course because you know this webinar just covered the basics, and uh, and the real magic is is on this again on the on the next level and, and we cover all of that in this course and obviously it's 100 percent satisfaction uh, protected so if you're ready to take your game to the next level we have a risk-free way to help you here's what you're getting today it's the finding spots mastery course this is the only online fishing course guaranteed to help you start finding more consistent inshore fishing spots and help you avoid the dead zones by putting you in the best spots. There's a reason that word best is on the cover. This is how to find the best spots. So anyone can find spots. This is how to find the very best spots anywhere you go. And we're about to see this over the top guarantee that we have in place. 365 days. We've never, ever done this before. So here's what you're going to get today. You're going to get the Fishing Spots Master Course. This is something that we were originally going to sell for $297 because there is at least that much value, if not a whole lot more. And once again, this is all about helping you find the very, very best spots. 
All right, so one question that we get a lot is, who is this Fishing Spots Mastery Course work for? Well, it's worked from everyone from newbies to, to weekend warriors. Even some full-time fishing guides have gone through and seen some cool value. Yeah, and also, you know, whether it's boaters, kayakers, shore anglers, it really applies to everybody because just finding spots is, is an art in itself. And if you are a boater, you know, you obviously have more options. But if you're a shore angler, you know, you, you, the same tactics work. You just have to apply those tactics to areas that you can access. Um, so it's, again, the same tactics, strategies apply. Um, you, you'll just have to really fine-tune it. It's actually more valuable, uh, I would say, for you know kayakers and shore anglers because you really have to, to maximize your time. You can't quickly get up and move if you do happen to select a bad spot to start with. And as far as locations, yeah, really from Texas, Louisiana, you know, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida on the Gulf, um, and, and then we've had people from up to North Carolina, you know, go through these tutorials and, and really just have like, wow, like, thank you so much. I never thought of that before. So uh, it's not a, a region only thing. As you saw in the, in the, in the webinar is that, you know, some of, there's some tactics that you can use, even if the water is really murky to, to really generate a, some good insight into, you know, whether it's good or not. And, and specifically the on the water assessment, which I, I personally feel is, uh, is just as valuable, if not more valuable than the finding spots, you know, that obviously applies to, uh, to anywhere because it's more about reading the water and, uh, and knowing what to look for, knowing what, tr what, uh, what triggers or what typically, um, what typically triggers a dead zone versus the feeding zone. Cool. And so here are a couple testimonials from people who have been through this. Luke, Joe, and Tony, you guys are really awesome. This course was a complete game changer to my busy schedule. I can now pre-plan a fishing day the proper way, fish three to four hours, kill it, and go home happy. Thank you, David Jones and Naples. And here's another one from, uh, from Doug Duke. I wanted to tell you that I joined this fishing course to prepare for my trip to Port Charlotte. Uh, in Florida in December, but your courses have got me so pumped that I've scheduled three other trips to the Mississippi Gulf Coast and a trip to Grand Pass in Louisiana because I now know how to find consistent fishing spots. My wife is also letting me leave a week early for our December trip so I can drive down to Crystal River and hit all the spots down south around uh, Port Charlotte from the Insider Club reports. Thanks again, dude. All right, so here's what you're going to get today. It's that Fishing Spots Master Course, but we have a couple of bonuses we want to throw in completely for free. Bonus number one is understanding tides and currents. This is a $57 value. This is all video-based as well, and it's really discovering the tricks to catching more fish based on the tides and currents. It's something that not a people, not enough people talk about, right? Because you can still be in the right spot, but if you're there during the wrong time, it can actually hurt you. Exactly right. There's no, there, I can't say there's no, but there's very few spots that are actually productive all year long. So it's more about, you know, knowing which, you know, I guess where to start looking. And then uh, secondly, once you're there is to know, okay, what, what are the signals that it's going to be a dead zone? And, and that once you see those, time to get up and go. Yep. So that's bonus number one. Bonus number two is updates for life. The beauty of this is once you're in, you are in for life. And we're going to continue to keep updating this. And so, you, gosh, you could be getting new videos even a year, two, three years from now and never have to pay another dime for it. That's really valuable. Yeah, and this includes the Q&A. So at the bottom of every tutorial, there's a, a Q&A section uh, where you can ask questions and get answers from, from me or the, or the rest of the team. Uh, and, and so that's, uh, that's obviously live as well. So you get that for life. Cool. Bonus number three, best times to fish video. This is another video here that Luke has never really released before, and it's just all talking about the best times to fish, depending on where you are, what kind of structure you're fishing, et cetera. Yeah, this has been probably one of the, the most common questions that, uh, that have come in, so I thought, thought we'd just make a, make a bonus section here and, uh, and include it. Yep. Bonus number four, we got another one, the best knots in any situation, $37 value. This is going to be another freebie here. It's another one that people ask about, and, and if you know anything about my brother Luke, he is kind of like an engineer, loves this stuff, and actually puts all these different knots up to the test. Yeah, and, and uh, this is obviously, it'll cover you know, the best knot for the different types of connections, whether you're using braid to mono, you know, braid to fluoro, or mono to mono, and, and, uh, and this is something I never tested before until we started Salt Strong. And just from the basic tests that I first started doing, my, my knot strength went up 30%, like my overall line strength. 
and, uh, and, it, and so I was using, again, knots that, uh, you know, that kind of a lot of pros say are the best. Uh, turns out there are some out there that, uh, that truly are better. So here's what you're going to get today. The Finding Spots Master Course, $297 value. The Understanding the Tides and Currents bonus. The Updates for Life. The Best Times to Fish video bonus. And the Best Knots in Any Situation. That's a total value of $545. If all this did was just help you catch one or two more fish per trip, would it be worth it? If it saved you 45 minutes per trip, not having to waste your time bouncing around from unproductive spot to another, would it be worth it? What if it helped you outfish all of your friends in less time? Would it be worth it? So how much would you pay to start catching more inshore fish more consistently and making the most out of every trip Imagine how good it would feel to have countless spots in every area that you fish just with like 30 minutes of actually pre-trip planning. And we obviously teach you, you know, exactly how to do all that. And, and just imagine being able to find and catch more redfish, snook, flounder, black drum, trout, and really any other inshore fish than ever before with just a little bit of, of pre-trip planning and, and just using today's technology to make the most of your time. All right. So if you're here, you got to be wondering, how much does all of this cost? Well, you know, we talked about the cost of like taking a guide out for the day or really just having someone's time like Luke really analyzing all this stuff for you. And, and of course, that could get pretty expensive. And we didn't really want to do that. We wanted to have something that really everyone could access because our ultimate goal here at Salt Strong is to help as many people as we can catch as many inshore fish as possible. But even so, you could probably see why it's even a good deal, that $545 with all those bonuses and all the awesome stuff in here. But because you made it this far, you can get all of this now for just $17 today. $17, and you never have to pay another penny again. It is yours for life. Yeah, this isn't like one of those things you see late at night on TV and there's a little small print where, you know, after a little bit you get charged more. This is literally a one-time payment. $17, $17, and, it, and not only is it get you this entire course for life, but, but also you get it immediately, and you have a 365-day guarantee. We wanted to make this as an easy decision as possible, and uh, this is a very limited time, obviously. Yep, so 365 days to make sure this is working for you. So at any time in the first 365 days, if you don't feel like it's adding value, and if you don't feel like you're catching and finding more fish, Then ask for all your money back. We'll give you every single penny. So once again, if you're still on the fence, here's what you get today. For just $17, you get the Finding Spots Master Course, $297 value, the Understanding Tides and Currents, the Updates for Life, the Best Times to Fish video, the Best Knots in Any Situation, total value $545. So once again, you can get all of this now for just $17 today. You're going to get immediate access as soon as you register. Just click the button down below to start. So you now have two choices. The first option is do nothing. Don't take us up on the small leap of faith, which is 100% risk-free for 365 days. Or option number two is pony up this really small investment today compared to all the value you're going to get in return and just give it a shot. If it works, great. If not, then ask for your money back and you'll get every single dime. So sign up today if you somehow don't like it for any reason. I don't care if it's 364 days, 23 hours, and 59 minutes from now. Just email us at fish at saltstrong.com and we'll refund you all your money, no questions asked. So the real question is, is it worth investing just $17 to get guaranteed results? If it does even half of what we've claimed today on this webinar, it'll pay for itself in the first few videos. Let me tell you the tale of two anglers. The guy there on the left is the guy that keeps going back to the same old spots. He's the guy that's taking pictures of the skunk sets and just wondering why he's frustrated. And the guy on the right is Tony. That's the guy that did invest some of his money a couple years ago. He's one of the first people to ever go to our courses and literally it changed his life. We have proven that this stuff works, and what kills us is when we do have people that get all the way here, don't take us up on this risk-free investment, and then just keep going back 
to the same old stuff and, and just continue to be frustrated. Life's too short not to have fun out on the water. And that's why we've made this a complete no-brainer for you. Let me show you what to do next. As soon as you click the button below this video, this is going to be the page that you're going to see. You can see the 100% money back guarantee, 365 days. You get to see a picture of Luke there, all the stuff that you get. And then a couple more testimonials. You put your contact information in, your billing. And there's an opportunity here to get a special deal that might, may or not be on, on yours, depending on when you actually get in here. Put your credit card information. You're allowed to use PayPal as well. You got your $17, and then boom, it is yours. You get instant access. Yeah, and as soon as this is completed, you're going to get an email from us that explains exactly how to log in. There's actually just a single click login, so it's super easy. And, uh, and then we're going to obviously check up on you as well just to make sure that you got in okay. So once again, here's what you're going to get today, all for $17. The full Finding Spots Mastery Course, the Understanding Tides and Currents, the Updates for Life, the Best Times to Fish video, and the Best Knots in Any Situation. $545 value, all for just $17. So if you're still here and you somehow didn't sign up immediately like most people do, then it might be for a couple reasons. Reason number one, I'm worried this won't work in my area. I think as we've already proved in the webinar, this can work anywhere. We've proven it can work from Texas up to North Carolina, even in places that have murky waters. Yeah, and reason number two, you know, will this really work for me? I don't have a boat or I fish from shore or a kayak, you know, whatever the, the case might be. Absolutely, this certainly does, uh, can and will help you. It, it does not matter what vessel uh, you fish with. It could be the fanciest flats boat out there. Or it could be just a pair of wading shoes that you use to, to walk around. There's, um, it really doesn't matter because the same tactics apply either way. And then reason number three is I don't have a $17 to my name. Quite honestly, if that's the reason, don't buy this. This is not for you. We know this stuff works, but we don't ever want someone spending their last $17 on anything. That's not fair to you. And quite honestly, we just want, don't want anyone's last $17. So if you do have more than $17, here's what you're going to get today. The Finding Spots Mastery Course, the Understanding Tides and Currents, the Updates for Life, the Best Times to Fish video, and the Best Knots in Any Situation, $545 value, all for just $17. Let me tell you a quick disposable income story. Every month, you spend disposable income. That's money on things like movies and dinner and your cable and sporting games, fishing tackle, etc. Much of what we spend our disposable income on are things that really don't provide that much value into the future. You know, meaning like if you go out and have drinks or have a dinner, yes, there's some kind of short-term satisfaction, but long-term it doesn't really do that much for you. Well, what I'm asking you to do is take just a small portion of your disposable income and invest it into something that will continue to pay you dividends years from now. This is the kind of stuff that could change your fishing game for the rest of your life and even the rest of your kid's life and anyone else that you want to share it with. This is really, really powerful stuff. And we can't say this enough. You're going to get all of this right now for just $17. There are no more fees, no more charges. You get all this for $17. So click the button below and we can't wait to see you on the course. So get started now for just $17 today. And if you're actually still here, this is the final slide. That means you probably have a question. So if so, just, just email us at fish at saltstrong.com and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. But this offer does expire very soon. So again, worst case, just get it. And you're again, you're fully protected for 365 days. And if you again, if you have any questions afterwards, we of course will be quick to reply. Thank you for attending the webinar. Fish on!